Hi there, my name is Aaron and this is my 2005 Fiat Panda 4x4 called Pedro. So this is basically going to be a walk around video on Pedro the Panda, explaining everything I've done to it during my ownership, um, some plans I've got for it, but also just showing the, the kind of setup I am running. Seems to be a lot of people on my Instagram page are interested in what I've done to it. So yeah, I thought I would kick off this YouTube channel with a little walk around video of Pedro the Panda. I'll start off at the front of Pedro to show what I've done there um, and, and a little side note if you hear some gunshots in the background don't be alarmed I'm on a farm and they're uh, shooting some stuff in the woods at the moment so uh, yeah uh, at the front I have got a little tow hitch there which probably isn't the best but it'll do for now I'm planning to change that to a nicer setup um, maybe a winch at the front as well I've got a couple of Heller spot lamps which are wired into a switch on the dashboard uh, and then if you look at the headlights, there's no headlight guards really available for this car. So I've kind of made my own. Um, and as you can see with a rock, as an example, there is no way that rock is gonna damage my headlight now. So they work very well. To be honest, the more aesthetics than anything else. And then if we look underneath, I bought a sump guard from a company called Sump Guard UK, which ironically are actually based in Romania. Anyway, uh, I bought a sump guard off them, which also comes with a rear disc guard, which I'll show when I'm around the back. And to be honest, the, the, the sump guard kit is really, really good. It comes um, with all, everything you need to fit it. Uh, but for what I needed, I needed to add a little bit more strengthening to it. Uh, so I've put some more steel inside and welded some box section to it to make it stronger. And now that is absolutely rock solid. Um, I think it's a two millimeter steel, but I've added a lot of box section to that and I've done some pretty hard hard stuff on it and it hasn't uh, bent or, or got out of shape. So that's working quite well. If we come around to the side, you can see I have fitted some much bigger tires. So these are the original 14 inch steel wheels from the Fiat Panda, um, also from the Fiat Punto and Fiat 500. Um, but I've also fitted these arch trims and that's mainly because to fit these bigger tires, which are Maxxis worm drives, I think they're 215 7014. And to, to allow them to fit with a lot of clearance, you have to cut quite a lot of the wheel arch away. And I didn't want kind of a sharp edge or a bit of a wobbly line. So I thought that if I put these arch trims on, it would just kind of finish it off nicely. And they're not too bad. They're universal, so they don't fit the car perfectly. Uh, I'm looking at a different set at the moment, which I'll probably put on later in the year. But for now, that they're okay. That They're not too bad. Uh, at the front, I've also fitted a lift kit, which I don't know if you can see, if I get the camera in there. So as you can see, there's a rubber block at the top, uh, which is a 20 millimeter lift kit, which is just a, um, a kit from eBay. But then I've also fitted a nylon, um, a little nylon kind of spacer in there as well. So in total, I'm probably about 30, 30 mil lift at the front, um, which is definitely needed if you're doing some off-roading. And then if I just open the bonnet up, This is probably where most of the work has gone into uh, Pedro the Panda. Originally the car had a 1.2 litre petrol engine with 59 horsepower, which was just about okay with the original setup to the original wheels and, and what have you. But now that I've fitted bigger wheels, which effect effectively is gearing the car up, um, they lifted it up, put a roof rack on and so on. The aerodynamics and the rolling resistance has increased dramatically. So with the original engine, I could barely get 65 miles an hour. And then up a hill, I was, I was really struggling. So what I've got here is the 1.4 litre, 100 horsepower engine out of the Panda 100 horsepower, which you'll see there. That was my donor vehicle. Um, so it's looking pretty sorry for itself. Um, so yeah, that engine goes pretty much straight in. It's roughly three days to do the conversion, to get the old engine out, get the new engine in. There's a few other little bits you have to fit. So you have to fit the ABS pump. You have to fit the um, engine bay wiring harness, which runs into the dashboard. So the whole dashboard has to come out. 
just a little bit time consuming, but it is basically plug and play. You just swap everything out that you need from the from the donor car, and then you put it into this. Um, a YouTube channel called UK Panda 4x4, they have shown a relatively detailed guide on how to do the conversion, and that was really, really helpful. Along with the um, UK Panda 4x4 Facebook group, they're all very helpful there, so that was some great guidance. Uh, as you can see, all of this gubbins is my homemade snorkel, which is because you can't get a snorkel kit for these cars, not yet anyway. Um, so basically 51 millimeter pipe coming out of the throttle body to a T piece so the um, breather can attach onto it. Another uh, right angle 51 millimeter pipe. This is um, going to be changed with a silicon flexi pipe like this. I have ordered it, but it hasn't turned up yet. Um, I was also struggling with a lot of intake noise when I had this set up on the 1.2 litre engine. Um, so I fitted a, an additional uh, air filter, which definitely helped with noise. Um, but this is also useful because it helps stop um, water getting in. If you're driving in the rain, you don't have to turn the, the top around. Uh, there is a little filter at the top, which I'll show you in a second. But the, if, it, if you are driving in the rain, the water can kind of collect in there. And I've made a very small 1.5 millimeter hole underneath, which sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but water will not get in there. Um, but what it does allow is it allows a very small drain hole. So if any water does get in from the top, then it can kind of drain out. And this is the lowest point as well. So um, if any water does collect, it will sit right underneath the one, 1 1.5 millimeter hole that I've made. Um, but this has had to increase from 51 millimeters to 76 millimeters to fit this universal air filter and then back down to 51 millimeters. Um, the engine bay is a little bit tight, so you kind of got to be a little bit creative with where you route it. I've routed it next to the battery tray, which goes up to here. And then a 45 millimeter, um, sorry, a 45 degree angle uh, joiner there. Made a hole in my scuttle. Um, and then that kind of goes up to there, around to this, which is a 90 degree metal pipe, another 51 millimeter pipe, which then attaches to basically a 51 millimeter drainage pipe, which I have painted in a U-pole Raptor finish, which is very tough now. And then this goes from a 51 millimeter to again, a 76 millimeter, which then mounts the um, head of my snorkel and then I bought a kit as well which allows you to fit a um, an additional filter at the top here which I think is really worthwhile and this just kind of slides out and then the kit comes with uh, quite a few of them in the packet I think it's about 25 30 pounds I can't remember but basically that slides out and then you can take this filter out put a new one in and just slide it back in but they are also cleanable so you don't have to swap it out when it gets dirty you can uh, clean it up and then for some additional support I have uh, mounted a little support bracket to my roof rack and then a couple of little brackets here and here to help support it and it's pretty sturdy you know it's not going to go anywhere uh, and it does the trick I have been to Wales on the Strata Florida which is quite a brutal green lane in, in Wales and I went through some water so much so that the car started to float uh, and but it didn't cut out, no water got into the engine. I managed to drive straight back out as soon as I gained some traction. And yeah, and it hasn't really let me down at all. Another little addition I have done in the engine bay, which is a little bit difficult to see, that little bit there, which is on top of my gearbox, that is my gearbox breather. And the original one isn't the best. I found that when I did an, uh, a gearbox oil change, it was a little bit milky, so water was definitely getting into the gearbox. Uh, I didn't want that, so I fitted, I, I t removed the original little breather uh, mushroom kind of thing on top, threaded the hole, put a little fitting in, and then I've got a pipe running up 
uh, and then this runs parallel with my snorkel into the same hole and then this is kind of tucked up into my um, into my scuttle area kind of running al along the, um, the along the edge near where my windscreen is so that's completely protected um, and no water now gets in a little bit of additional um, uh, kind of mounting for my front turrets these are known to be floating and then when you go over quite a harsh bump you hear a little bit of a knocking noise which is perfectly normal for these cars and the Fiat 500 um, but I fitted this little nylon bush under there which um, has really helped that and, and reduced that kind of knocking noise so yeah that's basically the engine bay now let's start moving around the side so around the side, I've already explained the wheel arches. It's the same as at the back, uh, but for a little bit of clearance, I had to kind of do a slash cut there and, and cut some of the rear bumper away to gain some clearance for the bigger wheels. Um, I've got a lift kit on the back as well, which is basically a rubber donut at the top, which sits uh, on top of the spring. And this gives a roughly 30 millimeter uh, increase at the rear. I don't know if you can also see, but the rear arms have been poly bushed, which um, I think if you're replacing the rear arms, which is an absolute pig of a job, definitely worth getting the best quality, um, best quality poly bush kit you can, because you don't want to take them, bush them arms off again. So you might as well do it properly, do it once, and then you don't have to worry about taking them off again. Got a little four by four decal, because four by four life, why not? Um, and if you look at the top of the car, I have a universal roof rack. Now this is a pretty good fit, you know, considering it's a considering it's a universal one. It's really good quality. It cost about 140 pounds. Um, I just had to get a couple of these um, supporting bars, which I had lying around. I just mounted it straight to my roof rails, which has been perfectly sturdy enough. The roof rails hold about the same maximum capacity as the roof rack, which is around, I think, 150 kilos or 125 kilos. I won't be putting anywhere near as much as that on there. Um, I mainly use it to hold my spare wheel, which I carry around with all, all the time because, because it's so big now, it doesn't fit in the spare wheel well. Uh, and then if I go camping or, or, or go away and I need to carry a little bit more luggage, I put it in here. Uh, it also has my uh, CB radio aerial, which is inside the car, which I'll show you now. Along the side, I also have some wind deflectors, which I fitted, which kind of help with wind noise, but mainly just aesthetics. So this is my CB radio, which is just mounted on my dashboard. Uh, it's quite handy if you're going away with a, with a group of people and you can all communicate if there's a hazard ahead or someone is stuck behind you. Uh, and then the talking section is just mounted on the dashboard there, which is quite handy and close to hand. Apart from that, the interior is pretty much standard. Uh, I do have some plans to fit some switches up here, which will then control some um, LED um, strip lights at the front, back, left and right. Um, so I will be doing that later on. But because of the engine swap, I, you do have to swap the gauge cluster. So this is now the gauge cluster from the 100 horsepower Panda. Um, this came with the car when I bought it, Pioneer uh, head unit which is pretty good, not too bad. Uh, then in here, I've got a walkie-talkie and then some ratchet straps if I want to put anything on the roof. And I've also got a net back there as well. And it just houses the wiring for the CB radio. So at the rear of the car, as I said, I had to do a slash cut on either side of the bumper to allow some clearance for the wheels. Um, and again, like the front, you have to cut a fair amount out of the uh, rear arches. Uh, the front arches are single skinned, the rear ones are double skinned, so it is a little bit more difficult to cut the rear arches than it is the front. Um, but once you've cut it off, you get plenty of clearance, uh, and then these arch trims just kind of finish it off. But like I said, I will probably be changing them for some different ones. Um, I've got a similar tow hitch at the back, uh, which again, I'll probably change for a better one eventually. Uh, on some other off-roading trips I've done, I've ripped off the rear bumper, so they are held on by some screws down there, and also the ob obligatory cable ties. So, yeah, same as the rear trim here, this is all held on by uh, self-tappers because that fell off. Um, but at the back, it's pretty much standard, apart from, as I mentioned earlier, a little diff guard, which came with the sump guard at the front. 
Um, but as you can see under here, not much is uh, not much has been altered. The springs I fitted at the rear, uh, I used Auto Dock because that has, it's quite a good website where you can kind of look at all the varieties and variants of a car. I actually chose rear springs from a Fiat Panda van, which are very slightly thicker, so they're a little bit stiffer. And that helps if I've got passengers in the car or I load the car up, it helps prevent the rear from sagging down too much. Uh, the bump stops are from a Fiat Coupe, which when I owned in a Bath 595 once, uh, when you lower the car, it's kind of a known thing that you change the bump stops for Fiat Coupe ones because they're a little bit more shallow. So I get a little bit more clearance before the bump stops touch the rear swing arms. Another thing at the rear I've done is modify the rear diff breather, which like the front was originally just kind of like a little mushroom filter on top, which didn't do a great job. And when I changed the diff oil, there's definitely evidence of water getting in there. So again, like the front, I put a little fitting on the breather with the pipe running up. And quite ha it was quite handy that the breather was exactly lined up with the spare wheel well kind of nubbin which goes into the boot floor. So what I've done is I've put a bit of pipe on top, ran it all the way up, used the, drilled a hole into the side of the nubbin at the top and then kind of ran it through the boot uh, metalkit which I'll show you now. So this is from the top which now as you can see the pipe runs through from the side of there where the tool kit mounts and it runs up and clips quite nicely into this little holder here and yeah since then no water's got into my rear diff at all there's no smell of gearbox oil and i think this works quite well and as i mentioned earlier this is my cb radio aerial uh, which swings away nicely and when you go into a multi-story car park it bashes on the roof and all the hanging lights which is quite funny uh, the route the wiring routing is just uh, down into the passenger door um, which doesn't really pinch it too much it's okay it's been on there for just over a year now and it's perfectly fine and then I've just tucked that into the rubber trim all the way along down there and then it goes just along the dashboard to the back of the CB radio but that is essentially it. That is Pedro the Panda and all of its little upgrades. Um, it is now quite a capable little car off-road and I think that's mainly due to the fact that it's so light. It weighs just over a tonne uh, and yeah, I mean it's great fun. Parts are pretty cheap compared to your bigger off-roaders. Uh, it's been really reliable. It's never let me down. I've never broken down in it so fingers crossed it continues that way. But it is just a great fun car and now with that 1.4 liter engine it is a lot more usable. It's definitely not quick by any means but you can quite easily cruise at kind of the national speed limit 70 miles an hour no problem at all. Going up hills is fine and off-roading it is a lot better because you've got a little bit more torque and it pulls you up uh, things much better. And if you want to keep up to date with anything that I'm doing with Pedro the Panda, think about subscribing to this channel. Uh, I've also got a uh, Instagram page called The Panda 4x4, which has a load of pictures and videos from various other trips I've done. So, like I said, thank you very much for watching. This has been my first video on YouTube to show off Pedro the Panda and what I've done to it. Hopefully it's going to inspire some people. But if you want to keep, uh, keep up to date with what I do, subscribe to the channel give this video a like if you want to look at some other bits that i've done have a look at my instagram page which is the panda 4x4 um, but yeah thank you very much for watching and i'll see you soon